Hello everyone, welcome back to Science at Home with Supernova. My name is Derek, and today we'll be learning about JavaScript. In the last video, we learned about HTML and how HTML can create the structure of our web page. In today's video, we'll be using JavaScript to create and add behaviors to our website. JavaScript is a programming language. It modifies the behavior of our web page so that users can interact with it. And the interaction we'll be creating today is whenever we click on the image of a cookie, the cookie clicker will increment by one. There are several components to JavaScript and we'll be learning about variables and functions. Variables can store any type of data values and we'll be learning how to store numbers and strings. Functions is a block of JavaScript code. It is activated when an event occurs. An event occurs whenever something is triggered and that can be from a user interaction or a pre-programmed trigger such as a typed event that can occur hourly or daily. Now let's get started creating our first script. With our HTML document that we created in the last video and our website open, we can now write our first piece of JavaScript code. JavaScript code goes inside the script element. The script element can be anywhere inside our HTML tags because it is not displayed to the user. It is in the background. So we're going to put our script tag after the closing body tag. And we're going to type opening script tag and closing script tag. Now we have a place to write our JavaScript code. So the first thing we have to do is find a way to access and alter this number zero. Because every time we click on the image in our website, we want this number to increment by one. So going back to our HTML document, we're going to first locate the number zero. And in order to access this number zero, we need the span element. What the span element does is it simply adds a hook to a part of the text. So we're going to type the opening span element and the closing span element. So now we have a way to access this number zero. The next thing we have to do is add an attribute to the span tag. And inside our opening span tag, with the attribute we're going to add is ID. So we're going to type ID equals quotation mark. And inside it, we're going to assign an ID called counter to our number zero. With this line of code, what it's doing is it's assigning an ID called counter to our number zero. Now that we have a way to access our number zero, we can now begin adding JavaScript to alter the number zero. Inside of our script element, we can now start writing our first line of JavaScript code. And what we're going to do is create a variable called clicks. To do that, we declare the variable by typing var, and we're going to name this variable clicks. And we're going to assign the number 0 to our clicks. And with every line of JavaScript code, we have to end it with a semicolon. The next thing we have to do is create a function to increment our number every time we click on the image of the cookie. To do that, we can type function and we're going to name our function increment bracket and curly bracket. The purpose of our increment function is that whenever this function is triggered, we want our counter to increment by one. To do that, we first have to type clicks equals clicks plus one semicolon. What this line of code does is whenever this function called increment is triggered, clicks, the variable clicks, will increment by one. The next thing we have to do is assign this variable back to our counter inside of our HTML web page. And to do that, 
we can type counter dot inner HTML equals clicks semicolon. What this line of code does is it's going back into our HTML document, finding an ID called counter and assigning the, the variable clicks to the counter element. With our increment function created, we now have to find a way to trigger this function. To trigger this function, what we have to do is click on the image of our cookie. To do that, we have to add another attribute to our image element. So going back to our elements, image element, we're going to add an attribute called onClick equals quotation mark. And inside our quotation mark, we're going to simply put the name of our function, which is increment. Brackets. OnClick is an event in HTML, and whenever we click on the element, it will trigger the function inside the quotation mark, which is increment. So now we can click save, go back to our web page, hit refresh, and now when we click on the image of our cookie, our counter will increment by one. The last thing we're going to do in this video is add a button called reset to refresh our counter every time the button is clicked. So to do that, let's go back to our HTML document and we're going to create a button by using the button element. And we're going to call our button reset. We're going to save, hit refresh in our website, and we should have a reset button. Now inside of our button, opening button tag, we're going to add an attribute called ID, and we're going to assign an ID called reset, and we're going to add another attribute called onclick. And for our onclick event, we'll create a function called reset. So every time we click on the button reset, it will run a function called reset. That means we have to go back to our script, create a function called reset. And inside of our function reset, we're going to type clicks equals zero semicolon. And in the next line, we'll type counter dot inner HTML equals clicks. For this function, every time it is triggered, it will assign zero to clicks and assign clicks back to our counter inside the HTML. Now we can hit save, go back to our website. Hit refresh and let's click on the image of our cookie to increment the counter. And now we can hit reset and our counter will be reset back to zero. And this is how we can use JavaScript to modify our web page so that we can interact with it. In the next video, we'll be learning about CSS to style our web page. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.